for our, our panelists today. So again, we're at the San Diego and Imperial Small Business Development Center. My name is Danny Fitzgerald. I'm the Acting Regional Director, and we have um, many, many folks throughout San Diego that are here to assist small businesses. Uh, of course, we've been doing a ton of work around, uh, around COVID-19, the recovery. We did you know, a, lot, a lot of work around PPP and EIDL. and have helped literally thousands of businesses along with that. And today we're actually talking more about just more of our traditional capital. We will some talk a little bit about, uh, about COVID-19 and some of the recovery. I know some of our, our guests have some of, the, some of that programming. And we really appreciate them for absolutely getting on. And again, uh, we, we appreciate our sponsors, which are CDC Small Business Finance, which Miriam's here today, uh, Marble Bridge Funding Group, Primary Funding, Home Street Bank, and Main Street Launch. So, so really appreciate the, the support that we get. Of course, the Small Business Development Center is primarily funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration, as well as by the State of California through the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. So enough about me and, and everything. That we'll get to uh, to our guests and kind of learn a little bit about them. Um, certainly, we also have one of our our SBDC center directors slash advisors that's on on as well. Wesley, we'll, we'll introduce him here momentarily. But we're going to start with uh, with with our lenders here and kind of work our way through. We are we're waiting on one more, but we'll we'll catch up with her once she gets on. But why don't we go ahead and start to uh, start with you, Kelly, and and the organization you represent and uh, the types of loans that you offer. Sure. Um, I'm with the International Rescue Committee. Um, we are also at SBDC, and we also have um, a small CDFI called IRC CEO, and we offer loans from credit building loans starting at $100, their zero interest, through a credit building ladder that goes up to $1,000, and then we do small business loans of up to $20,000. Fantastic. What about you, Rosalinda? I'm with Acción. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization that provides loans up to $100,000. Uh, we have a COVID relief loan up to $50,000. We have been in San Diego for over 25 years serving the uh, LMI community, uh, but we actually help everyone that has a business. We also help startup businesses um, to pretty much... Uh, to provide fund to them to start. And um, our loans are basically from 3.99 to 18.99%, except for the COVID relief loan in San Diego, that is 1%. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Thank you. Yep. And Ms. Miriam. Hi, I'm Miriam and I'm with CDC Small Business Finance. And we have been around for over 40 years here in, uh, we started in San Diego and we do loans in California, Nevada, Arizona. Um, as of recently, also in Detroit, um, Michigan, and then also in Washington, DC. Um, but what we do is we're very mission oriented. We do loans up to 250,000. We do SBA loans and we also have some CDFI products. Um, but our mission is really to be able to help small business owners that are not able to get traditional lending. Um, also anybody that might have a barrier, so African American, Hispanic, um, maybe if your business is located in a low or moderate income area, um, or your employees um, are living in a low or moderate income area. Um, we focus on helping, um, yeah, anyone that might have a barrier, but we do help anyone who has a small business loan or has a small business um, and might have a need for a startup loan um, or is an existing business or might want to acquire a business. So, yeah. Fantastic. And, and Wes, we've got you on, of course, to talk a bit more about SBDC and how, how we work with, um, so, you know, the, you know, the different lenders and, and kind of work with them. So to introduce yourself and, uh, and just a teeny bit about what, what you do with, with SBDC and what we all do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Wesley Quatch. I'm with the Alliance SBDC. Uh, we are hosted by the Asian Business Association in partnership with the uh, Black and Hispanic Chambers here in San Diego County. Uh, we are one of the newest centers to the network. Uh, we offer no-cost um, counseling services for our small businesses and a series of various uh, webinars and workshops to help them out as well. Uh, we also offer um, translation services, so uh, especially for our Asian communities, uh, we have translators on standby 
in Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese, Japanese, Thai, Korean, etc., uh, to, to help them with their needs and 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 everything, anything uh, COVID nineteen related, uh, to helping them start a business, expand their business, uh, make sure all their all their accounting, their financials are in order. Um, so one example is uh, right now we're working with a uh, Korean speaking client, uh, actually with Rosalinda and Axion. Uh, this client was essentially uh, not eligible for PPP or EIDL, and so we felt that the the Axion uh, loan was a, a great kind of a alternative, and so we're working kind of a, in this four-way conversation between uh, ourselves, with Linda, our translator, and the client, and so um, we're here to help. Uh, you can reach us on our website, uh, abasd.org. You click on the uh, link that says SBDC and sign up for free counseling services. Um, if you need translation services, uh, feel free to uh, to mention that. Uh, usually, we can tell you know what language someone speaks, and and we're uh, pretty quick to uh, find someone that can help translate as well. Thanks. Awesome. Then going back to our lenders, I want to kind of talk a little bit more in depth about the types of loans. You kind of give some quick highlights on it, but also really you know what types of businesses you work with or don't work with. And, you know, do you work with startups and the like and how long they have to be in business? Why don't we, uh, we'll start with Miriam this time. Yeah, so uh, yes, we do work uh, with startup uh, small business owners. Um, so we can help you anywhere in the phase. So let's say that you worked with a business counselor at SBDC um, and they helped you get your projections and your business plan going. Um, we can go ahead and, and help you with that. Uh, we do look to make sure that you have another source of income besides the loan that you're asking us for in that case. Um, and if you can do that um, and uh, you have a, a good business plan and projections, then and your credit is at least a 680, um, then we can help you with the startup most likely. Um, and then uh, we also will help you if you have an existing business. So um, for us, um, you could be six months into a startup uh, and we'll still help you. You can be pre-starting and you want our help to get started um, or uh, as I mentioned, an existing business owner. Also, if you're looking to acquire, I know right now with um, everything that's happening with COVID, not, a lot of lenders are not uh, entertaining acquisitions. Um, we, still, we still are and we will do um, an internal and an external evaluation to make sure that you're paying what your business is worth. Um, and our loans, they go anywhere from 20000 to 250000 um, And our interest rates are anywhere from uh, a 5% promotion that's starting next week to a 9.25% is the highest that will go. Um, and we have some great terms, 10 years, which gives you a small, small payment. Awesome. And then, Kelly, on, on the other end of the spectrum, I know you work with a variety of types of businesses and have different types of products. Can you get go into a little bit more detail about those two? Yeah, so most of the clients that we work with um, are not able to access traditional funding uh, through banks. So um, it might be because they have a low credit score or do not have a credit history because they're new to the country. Um, but we work with clients who have been in business for a while or are just starting up. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I work with clients to when they're just starting to do the zero and zero percent interest um, credit building loan to pay for some of the fees. And then we work our way up to when they start uh, generating income to uh, apply for a larger loan. Our loans start at 9% or it's always at 9% uh, sorry but we also offer Islamic financing for those who um, due to religious reasons cannot have interest loans so we do offer a reba free fee based loan instead and the terms for our business loans are between three to five years. And you Rosalina you touched on some of the products but I know you, you can go a bit more in depth on those. Yes, uh, we definitely help startups. Um, the, the most important thing is they can uh, afford it, right? They have another source of income. So the business hasn't started yet, so they are not generating revenue. So, but they have to show that they have the capacity to uh, pay that, make payments on that loan. Um, if, they are, if they are not working right now, but they have a spouse or a parent or a sibling, 
that is willing to co-borrow on the loan and provide that capacity, we can work with that as well. So we have helped, for example, teams of husband and wife. The wife is working, the, the, the husband is starting the business. She has enough income to, to, to be able to support the family and pay the loan. In that case, the person will, will be approved. So that's basically when we come to start a business. So it could be the business does not have to be generating revenue yet. Uh, however, if the business is generating revenue for six months, it will no longer be considered a startup. And I'm talking generating substantial revenue. So it will not be considered a startup, it will be treated as a regular loan. And we can use that revenue to prove the capacity to pay. Um, if they, we can also strengthen the deal with a collateral. For collateral, what we will use a vehicle that is paid off. And the vehicles have to be worth 30% of the loan amount. So if they want 100,000, they need to provide a vehicle or a combination of vehicles that are worth around 34,000, to give you an example. And it could, be, um, it could be cars, it could be motorcycles, it could be trucks, it could be boats, it could be planes, anything that have a tag with the DMV, we could use as collateral on the loan. Fantastic. And so, so coming back to you, Wes, obviously there's a, you know, a lot of different loan products out there, a lot of different situations. And so when you're working with, with clients, you know, as an SBDC advisor or your advisors on your team or throughout the network, you know, some of the, th what are some of the key things that you really are able to do with them to help them, you know, determine the right lender and then also kind of prepare themselves? You're on mute. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a, a few things, right, is one, seeing if they are essentially ready for, for a loan. Uh, a lot of times we get clients coming in and right out the gate, they ask us, hey, I need 100K, 50K, 10K. And then, you know, my first instinct is, okay, is, okay well, let's, you know, what is your credit score? Do you have a business plan? Where are you in the formation of your business? And we realize that, you know, a lot of clients, especially in the startup phase, you know, they're, they're either too early for a loan or, you know, there's a lot of preparation on, on our end that we don't work on with them. And so for example, um, uh, not the network, we have workshops on, on how to improve your credit score. So that might be a good first step for a few individuals. And then um, if you don't have your financials in order, we're, uh, we're also offering a lot of um, accounting 101 uh, webinars and workshops. And uh, for example, we also have an advisor on staff that is a, a CPA uh, that can help um, kind of uh, teach you with, with basic uh, things with accounting and, pre and preparing your uh, balance sheet, your income statements and, and whatnot. And so I think a little bit of what we do is kind of the financial literacy and um, preparing our clients, let them know uh, what they need to get a loan, what they can expect and then uh, once we feel that they're ready, we'll make an introduction with, you know, one of our partners. Awesome. So, you know, again, SBDC does a ton of work. We work super closely with, with all the lenders, but, you know, and then a lot has certainly happened over the last number of months. You know, we had, of course, a wave of different types of loans and different types of, of products that were out there. And we'll talk, you know, and, and so I kind of want to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and, and kind of some of the stuff that happened and is still happening and, and what we really can do. And I know, uh, Rosalinda, you, you all did, so, you know, a fair amount of different types of work. You weren't in the PPP business, which we'll, we'll get to with Medium, because she certainly was. But I know you had some, pr some things in the, in the past, you know, that you've had, and then you still have some products available to kind of help folks get through this, uh, you know, still through the crisis that we're in. Yes, the, the COVID-19 product is a, an effort uh, from the county, San Diego County um, Supervisors and the San Diego Foundation. We have received $5 million to fund uh, small businesses. Initially, it was for the unincorporated areas of San Diego only, but a couple of weeks ago, it was expanded to, uh, to the whole county. So we were able to offer the 1% to the whole county. Our pipeline is full. We have a lot of applications for this product. We have this burst so far around, I will say, probably 3 million. So. Three millions by the end of this month. I think there is going to be one, one extra million left. However, uh, so this is the 1% product. It's only $250 in closing fee. 
and it's 95% guaranteed by the state of California guarantee program. Now there's other programs coming. Uh, there's gonna be the California Rebuilding Fund, which is um, coming in November, and other programs that we expect to offer as well. Um, if for those businesses that are located in San Bernardino, Riverside, and the Imperial Valley, they are going to pay 3.99%. That is a different fund that we have established ourselves for those areas, since they are also areas that we service. The, there, is no, there is no payments for six months on this product. The, the business owner will start, start paying on month number seven. And of course, there is no prepayment penalties like all of our loans. Now, if, if the borrower has, all, has already a loan with Axion, both loan combined, combined cannot exceed 50,000. That is very, so we, they can actually, for the first time in history of Axion, allow to have two loans simultaneously with Axion. However, both loans combined cannot, ex, cannot exceed the 50,000. So what happens if you have a $75,000 loan with us, then you won't be eligible for the COVID product from us. Fantastic, tons of great stuff. So I think it, you know, the, the key thing to remember is there still are some things out there. And you know, there's been a lot of work around there. You know, and, and Kelly, I wanna to come to you because I know you, you all in particular there have worked with a lot of different grant programs, um, and, you know, and as well as kind of some, you know, done a little still bit of credit building loans. So what, are, what you know, really has been your experience so far with, with COVID and, and what you're get offering and helping folks? Yeah, so um, as the SVDC advisor side, uh, we've been working with a lot of clients to apply for PPP and EIDL, but also to access different grants as well, um, like the San Diego Grant Makers Small and Disadvantaged Business Grant that's going on right now, the County Stimulus Grant, um, the City of San Diego uh, Grant as well. And then the IRC CEO was offering some small grants for clients um, based on their home size up to about $1,400. So it's not a lot, but it helps out in terms of like rent or something like that. Um, and then they were doing a small $700 uh, resiliency loan for 0% interest as well. So although that's not very big for a business, it can help with small immediate things like paying, you know, utility bills and stuff like that, or, um, you know, different permits that are due. And um, so I would say, but working with clients, the biggest thing that a business owner would need that they might not have ready is their access uh, or their financial records. That makes it a lot faster to apply for grants so that when they do open, you're ready to go right away. Fantastic. And then Miriam, I know CDC Small Business Finance has done a ton of work around COVID as well. You are, I know you have many, many different uh, folks that you helped through with PPP loans, um, but I know you've also had, you know, had some other products. So a little bit of your experience, you know, working obviously in the, in the mad rush of PPP, but also kind of what, what else you have available there at CDC? Yeah, so during PPP, we definitely were working 13, 14, 16 days our days um, getting those PPP loans. So we did thousands of those, um, a lot of relief for a lot of people. Um, we also did thousands of our COVID-19 loan, which was um, yeah, the four and a, and a quarter percent up to 150,000. Um, so now we currently are kind of um, by no means, uh, you know, back to business as usual, but um, we are offering, um, you know, acquisitions, as I mentioned, that a lot of lenders are not offering right now. Um, startups, um, you know, depending on the circumstances and the business plan, if it makes sense, um, you know, even for restaurants. So really the only things we're not lending on is anything in the adult industry or anything marijuana related. Um, other than that, we're kind of, you know, we're with a little bit stricter guidelines. We are doing all of um, the lending that we were doing before. The good thing about us is right now, um, actually starting next week, we have a promotion uh, for a 5% interest rate. Um, and then other than that, our interest rates are from 6 to 9.25%. 
Um, but when we look at an existing business um, or even a startup that maybe just has one year of tax returns, um, we're not uh, looking to try to qualify our clients uh, with 2020, um, you know, uh, you know, looking at their profit and loss and, and letting that be a deterrent on whether or not they qualify. We really are looking at 2019 um, and that's how we've been able to help a lot of people. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit about what we're offering here. Our 5% loan is, um, it's gonna have a, a lower credit score requirement of 640 instead of 680. Um, and it is more as to help to rebuild. So the qualifications are gonna be even easier to qualify on that loan as well. Fantastic. And so uh, Wes, I know you, you definitely have worked with many, many different clients. Uh, you know, I mean, a shout out to you. I know you've gone uh, well above and beyond in a lot of different situations. But so talk about, you know, your experience with COVID, you know, obviously during the, the PPP and idle rush and kind of now some of the programs that are out there, what, what, what you're doing. Yeah, so uh, COVID especially, you know, I think one thing with a lot of, um, a with a lot of uh, Asian owned businesses, it affected a lot of us um, kind of early on. Um, I have a client who owns a travel agency and uh, all they were doing in January, February were, were processing refunds for their clients, right? And so uh, this is well before the shutdown. And then I think one issue we ran into a lot with uh, all these COVID programs was the, you know, like, like how fast things were changing in terms of the, the terms, the conditions, the rules. And so, um, you know, just, just having people on hand that could translate uh, you know, a lot of information to our clients and let them know, oh, hey, you know, PPP chain is no longer, uh, you know, uh, so, so now it's, now it's uh, six months, 24 weeks instead of the initial eight or whatever uh, other rules have changed. Um, you know, I think, I think a lot of things we deal with with our communities, with our population is kind of a, a mistrust in the government, uh, people not wanting to submit their information. Um, one thing is a realization that um, they need to have all their ducks in a row in terms of their HR, or their, uh, their uh, employee classifications, right? Um, for example, uh, you know, we had a few clients who, who maybe uh, didn't get uh, the amount of PP that they wanted uh, because of their employees being misclassified as independent contractors or what, what have you. Um, and so, yes, it's definitely been, been, been a wild ride, and, and we're glad to see that uh, things are, you know, slowly getting back to normal. Businesses are reopening, especially our restaurants. A lot of them have been able to uh, adapt to COVID-19 in regards to uh, operating their business outdoors. Uh, we've helped a lot of clients with that uh, in terms of working with their landlords, working with the uh, city of San Diego and the uh, temporary outdoor, uh, outdoor business operation permit. Um, and all kinds of things, right? Like helping them to innovate, you know, restaurants with their food menus, um, to how their foods, you know, I guess, uh, be more suitable for outdoors. Uh, there, there's a great Vietnamese restaurant in City Heights that was able to uh, uh, kind of shift their menu and do outdoor dining and have a grill and offer skewers and kind of things that they don't traditionally offer on their menu uh, to uh, adapt to the situation. And so we're continuing to, to help our clients. I know that even though um, things are getting better, a, a lot of them still need our help. Fantastic. No, I, I, it, you know, a ton of great work has been done and I was glad he was able to highlight some of the work, you know, getting out there and helping different businesses adapt and pivot and, and the like. And, you know, cause I think that's something that is super critical, you know, and, and I, I was glad, glad that some of you all talked also about how you can't really look at the 2020 numbers because they, uh, they don't tell that whole story. And, and so as you're starting to move into kind of the next phase of, of lending, you know, what is your organization, you know, thinking in terms of, you know, 2021 and, you know, really how you will look once things start reopening and people are able to start operating and, and what, what you're, you'll be able to do, you know, you know, from an underwriting perspective and helping folks kind of be able to get loans as they're able to start operating. I don't want to use the word normal, but not in crisis mode. So why don't we start with you, Kelly, on, on some of that and, you know, what you're looking at kind of for, for 2021 and how you're kind of talking to clients about preparing for that. Yeah, so with IOC CEO, they're still in, intending to keep loaning funds. Um, they're being a little bit more conservative um, with their loans. 
But th what they really want to see is that you're going to have strong financial records. Now, they understand that that might not be incoming funds right now, but they want to see that you are really keeping track of everything and do have your ducks in a row because that's one of the things that, you know, that they're really willing to and want to see people grow financially um, and build their assets too. So they, they really do just want to make sure that people are moving up in life. So they will be continuing to loan to both startup and existing businesses. Like for example, one of the businesses that we work with, um, they just got a loan to open a storefront business um, restaurant during COVID and they're doing very well right now. So. Fantastic. And, and what about you, Miriam, at, at CDC Small Business Finance, I'm, I'm sure you're talking about 2021 and, and kind of some of what it's going to look like and, and how, you know, as people are able to start operating in, like I said, in, you know, non-crisis mode, I think is the best way to put it. Yeah, so um, when all of this, you know, started in March, like we were definitely one of the first people that still were lending and, uh, you know, had a COVID loan when a lot of people were not lending. I know most of the banks have pretty much closed their door and only focused on PPP. So, yes, we are always thinking about what's next and we're certainly, um, we don't have guidelines yet or know which programs, but, you know, we're going to keep lending. We're going to keep doing our mission and lending people that are not, lending to people that are not able to access, you know, traditional lending. And so that being said, now that banks have somewhat opened up a little bit of their lending, um, they are still, you know, very strict and very selective on who they're lending to. So wherever that gap is at, we're going to continue to have an open door at CDC. Um, of course, we have to be stricter than we were previous to COVID as far as in, you know, um, our bankruptcies now. You have to have had a bankruptcy 10 years ago before we'll lend to you. Um, and our credit score requirement, unless we have a promotion, um, is going to be a 680 credit score. Um, but as time passes by and as, you know, um, board willing things continue to get a little bit back to a new normal, um, we are going to continue to be less and, and less strict. Um, the way that we're doing that right now is by having promotions. Like I said, um, we have really tightened up um, compared to where we were at before. But that being said, I mean, I'm seeing every few months a promotion pop up with a really great rate um, with underwriting criteria that is a lot more loose and more like our old underwriting criteria. So um, as far as I know, we're going to keep doing that um, because, you know, that's what we're here for. That's our mission. Fantastic. And what about you, Rosalina? What, what are some of those conversations at Axiom? Well, I can tell you that we continue to lend uh, through our regular program as well. So we haven't stopped lending. Of course, there is an, an additional question that we're asking. How do you plan to survive uh, this COVID? Right? What is, what is your plan? We want to know how the business owners um, are pivoting and, and expect to survive these this difficult times. The business has to make sense, absolutely. And uh, we have seen incredible, incredible examples of, of businesses doing amazing during these times, right? Not only essential businesses, but um, you know, and to give you an example, we had a barber shop that the guy had a classic car and he sold raffle tickets. He sold raffle tickets, take tickets, and when he got to $40,000, he raffled the car and he raised $40,000. I mean, it's just incredible the, the, uh, the creativity, right, that you need to, to, to have to save your business. So anything that works. And people are doing amazing things to, to save their businesses. Now, in terms of lending, 2021, I think it's going to be a very interesting year because nobody knows what is going to happen, right? We don't know we're going to have a vaccine. We don't know all those things. Now, Axion was here in 2008 with all the lenders stop lending. We will continue to lend. We continue to lend. We never stop. So we are here again for, for our community to be able to provide loans for their business. However, people need to help themselves too. 
get your taxes done if you haven't done your taxes. You know, it is important uh, because those are documentation that we are going to require. Uh, keep your books up to date. Um, have a plan. Have a plan because we need to know what your plan is going to be. And um, find other solutions. Find other solutions. If those one doesn't work, go a different direction. Talk to your SBDC consultant. They are here to help you, especially when you are trying to find other ways to do what you always did. Be open to suggestion. Be open to new ways because um, if you stick to your old ways, you're not going to survive. So the business counselors at SBDC are here to help and we constantly keep sending people there to help. We have also contract with the company, with a nonprofit organization that help people raise their credit. And I have people that were denied in June or July, and they already got a $50,000 loan because they were able to make changes on their credit to raise their score and, and qualify. And a lot of people don't have the they know how on how to monitor their credit and it's important that you empower yourself and get the help you need. And we are here to offer that, that help, but it's up to you to take advantage of those resources. If you don't take action as a business owner, nothing will happen. So Acción is here to continue to learn to all those businesses. Um, of course, they need to meet the qualifications for us to be able to do something for them. And if you were affected for COVID, I mean, the one thing that I, that I noticed yesterday, when I asked clients, were you affected by COVID? He said, no, I didn't get COVID. <laughs> oh, you know, they think we're asking if they got the actual virus. But in, a, in actuality, we want to know if your business has been affected by COVID in the sense that if you have a reduction in sales or if you, you know, if your client took longer to pay you or if I had a, a trucker yesterday that told me, no, I wasn't affected by COVID, but when my truck broke down, I have to wait a long time for it to be fixed because of COVID. They said, then you were affected by COVID. So everyone was affected by COVID in a different way. Uh, so it's important that we recognize that. And we are now basically screening people for COVID first. And if they don't qualify for, uh, for COVID, then we offer a regular program. Now, if the business has started in 2020, they will not be eligible for COVID because these programs are for businesses that were doing great in 20, 2019, they were profitable, and, they, and COVID came. And everything, you know, everything went down. So it's important that people understand that a start of businesses in 2020 do not qualify for COVID relief. They will qualify for a regular loan if they meet the criteria for that. And also, if you, if you wrote off all your expenses in 2019 because you did not want to report a profit, that will affect you, affect you as a business owner as well. Because if you didn't show profit last year that, you know, had a great year, then how are you going to show capacity to pay? So everything is based on last year's tax return, 2019. Be aware of that. Fantastic. So such great information, Rosalinda. And, and, and Wes, I know, you, you know, some of the things that we're, we're having these conversations as we're, you know, re, you know, coming through the last couple of months of the year, you know, when, when you're talking to folks about kind of as they're preparing for, for 20, 2021 and, you know, and, and the idea of, you know, post-crisis, as it were, you know, like Rosalita said, we don't know when that will be. Um, but, you know, what, what are some of those conversations you're having and, 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 you know, and things that you're helping them prepare for? Yeah, so I think I'm going to echo a few of the things that uh, Rosalina said here. But, you know, like I, I tell our clients that, hey, like the next disaster could be another pandemic. It could be a fire. It could be an earthquake, cybersecurity related, like who knows what it could be, right? And I tell our clients, you know, just do the right thing. Make sure if you if your employees are should be W-2, classify them as W-2. Make sure your taxes are up to date, all your books. Just just do the right thing, right? And I also tell them too, um, you know, it's kind of unrelated, but you know, be involved in your community. Um, 
For example, I think uh, one of the grants with Liskin Low, uh, Lowe's Home Improvement a few, uh, few months ago, uh, one of the questions on that grant application was, you know, what is your involvement in the community? You know, like, what do you, what do, you do for your neighborhood? And so I know that's kind of a hard ask for a lot of our small businesses in this time, you know, of, of COVID, but uh, just continue to do the right thing. Make sure all your, all your um, financials are in order, your taxes, your, your HR, your employees, and if you can, give back and, and help out others. Awesome. Fantastic advice. And I think that that's critical. And I know we've seen a lot of businesses, you know, that have given back. I've seen so many different, you know, restaurants preparing food for, um, you know, for essential workers and healthcare workers and, and the like. And I think, you know, there's, there's so many different ways we've seen people give back. Um, so, you know, kind of to talk about a little bit of the success, you know, that you've had either with COVID or kind of in a cool pivot situation, a business that you've helped recently, you know, to be able to obtain funding, you know, kind of a success case type situation. If you could tell a little bit about that story. So, so why don't we start with you, Miriam, about, uh, about, a, about a success case you've had recently. Uh, so uh, we were actually recently able to fund um, a young couple who um, actually uh, a year ago started an online business on Amazon um, providing like specialty gifts for newborn children. Um, and so he, him and his wife were working um, as the business kind of got a little bit busier. She stopped working, but they have... Um, just kind of really cut corners, you know, they moved into their parents' house, uh, he's still working, um, they have good credit, they have low debt, you know, they're saving up to, to buy a house and they're saving up for their business. Um, and we were able to, you know, fund them 200000 um, you know, a little bit of refinance uh, from their startup costs to start their business um, that grandpa let them borrow <laughs> and then um, also some working capital to grow their business as they are expecting you know Christmas time to be a little bit busier than usual so so that's a success I mean I think that um, a, a lot of the business owners right now have to really change what they're doing and how they're doing um, you know I, I had a gal who who um, did pottery classes in person and then when COVID happened she had to quickly um, you know start doing offering zoom pottery classes um, and then she started to do kits and people could pick up the kits and so people really um, who have been creative I mean we have been able to help them um, you know with a loan because as Rosalinda said I mean Ultimately, we're looking at whatever their story is in COVID, that it makes sense, right? That they have found a way to still have income now <laughs> um, and for the future, regardless if we have a vaccine or not, right? So, so those are a couple stories of, of just, you know, some success where we were able to help clients that really have, you know, cut corners, uh, you know, thought smart and, um, and just made it work even through COVID. Awesome. And what about you, Kelly? I know you have lots of folks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the one that comes to mind quickest is some of the designers that we work with. Um, a lot of the clients that we work with are from different countries, and they really pivoted their businesses to start designing masks and kind of making them reflective of the cultures that they come from. Um, so our clients have been able to access some of the grants and PPP and resiliency loans so that they can purchase materials to make masks. And um, most recently, we partnered with San Diego Design Week and had a fashion show, which was very successful for our clients. And also, uh, the businesses were allowed to give back to the community as well by um, that giving away 150 free masks to the City Heights community. So that's been a really great way for a lot of the designer businesses to pivot. Fantastic. And what, what about you, Rosalinda? Well, um, one of the examples that I just said, you know, the, this, this, this barber shop that we funded, um, he did everything he could. So it not only a raffle his classic car to be able to pay his employees because he didn't want to lose any of his employees. He wanted to help his community, right? He, all of the, his barbers were in that community. He also, he also raffled uh, um, all haircuts, you know, haircuts for life. 
that was another raffle and he raised ten thousand dollars and he came to us for money so he was helping himself doing whatever he could to help his business and then came for us for a COVID. so that person was totally deserving of that loan because you could tell he was working hard to to not only provide that service to to his community but provide employment to people in his community as well um, we also help a a couple actually this was in the middle of the pandemic when no one want, no one was even open um, they had applied before covid for a hundred thousand dollar loan for a to open a cookie shop luckily you know they had excellent credit they have all the dogs in a row they have an excellent business plan and they were funded during covid when we were not even lending for covid yet they were funded their hundred thousand dollars to start their business so so it's not only about being able to lend or not being able to lend but it's about each individual what they're willing to sacrifice and they're willing to do. You know, if you come to us and you say, hey, I want to start a business. In the middle of a pandemic, you want to start a business? So we, 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 we give them all the tools, right? We say, okay, let's talk about what you are trying to do and how you're going to be successful. Have you spoken with a counselor? Have you spoke, you know, have you, if they want to buy a business, have you done evaluation? You know, talk to SBDC for evaluation of the business you need to really learn what you're getting into so not because they want to start a business we're just going to hand them the money we need to make sure um, it makes sense and and savings you know this is a great time to this is a great time to if you're going to start a business you need to show savings you need to show some capital available because of course we're going to be more strict right but if you tell me, Rosalinda, I want 100,000, I have 50 already, that means I'm only taking, we're only taking 50% of the risk, right? But if you tell me I only have 5,000, I want 100,000, that is not gonna happen. So the, the, it, it, it definitely has to make sense. And we have businesses that have gone above and beyond. Um, we had, we had a, a hairdresser, for example, that she had to close, right, because of COVID. So she, went to social media, did a video to teach all her clients how to color their hair at home and sold them kits, kits of their particular color because she had records of all her clients. So he said, I have the color prepared for you, $50, I will deliver it. You can do it at home, follow this video. So, you know, she didn't sit at home crying because of COVID, she did something about it. So these are the people that are definitely we're going to support because they are showing character, showing uh, that they, you know, that they're going to take action and can survive anything. But when so, sometimes we talk to people uh, that that say, oh, you know, I, I we had a client that had um, sold pretty much costumes for festivities, right, for special occasions. Right now, there is no special occasion, right? There's no events, nothing. So we say, why don't you do a sale? Do a sale online, you know, 50%, get rid of your inventory. No, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. So he was not willing to, to open up to ideas, you know, and what is gonna happen? They're gonna have to file BK or default on their loans and um, because they're not willing to pivot in any direction. They think their way is the only way. So those are the people that are gonna suffer during these times. Fantastic. And Wes, I know you've helped a lot of folks and I know you have some good stories. What can, what, what can you tell us? Yeah, I'll be able to tell uh, two stories actually uh, kind of related to uh, our small businesses uh, taking advantage of uh, real estate deals that, that are going on right now. So I, I have one client, uh, Filipino American owned, uh, they have a uh, boba and a uh, and uh, uh, ice cream shop down in Paradise Hills. Uh, they've been toying with the idea of opening up a location here uh, in the convoy area. And so um, just so happens that there is another business that is looking for someone to take over the, the rest of their lease. And so it's a perfect opportunity for them to get in, um, help out another business owner by taking over the lease and also expand a second location as well. 
And so hopefully we'll be um, there at their grand opening uh, Q1 of, of next year. And then I uh, also have another client who owns a uh, used uh, motorcycle dealership, also in, Con in the Convoy area. And uh, they're looking, uh, they're actually in the process of uh, moving to a new location, a larger warehouse down in the Lemon Grove, the Mesa area. And so we're seeing um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of our clients, um, you know, uh, just not just uh, adapting to, to, to the situation, but finding ways to uh, expand and grow their business during COVID as well. Fantastic. So we'll come to the last question. I'm also going to blend the, the, the one user's question here about, about their credit history. Um, you know, because of course there's, you know, what, what I want to kind of wrap up on is a tip of something to do or not to do. But, you know, but we know that a lot of folks were, you know, were, were rapidly seeking credit or they had different types of hits on their credit in terms of seeking lending and it can it can impact their credit score and you know kind of as a tip you know what that could certainly be the tip you talk about is what to do about these impacts you know all the way up to UCC filings that have occurred um, you know you know which are basically liens against their business and their assets um, you know or or all the like it as they're kind of you know finishing up COVID and, and kind of going forward, but also any other tip of what to do or not to do. So why don't, why don't we start with you, uh, Miriam, because I know you you deal with UCC filings and credits and, and all of that all the time. Yeah, so we um, have become more flexible than we were before in these areas. So we will take second place. Um, if one of our clients has an SBA loan somewhere else, we'll go in second place um, and also um, as far as in before, um, you really needed to, it, even if it was a 20 year old, um, let's say lien or, or judgment or anything of that sort, um, it had to get cleared first. Um, now, uh, if it's 10 years old, you don't look at it. Um, so we have become more, um, you know, consider of that. Also, sometimes I see honestly great borrowers that have like seven inquiries. <laughs> so they've been, you know, searching for a loan kind of as the small business loan for a while. Um, and we're not, a, we're not looking at that as negative, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not um, it's something that's going to not allow them to um, qualify. If I would say I have any tips, um, I would definitely say that when you come to first, I would say definitely use the SVDC. They're an amazing resource. I refer people to you guys all the time um, because you really help clients in all sorts of ways. I mean, um, I had a, a client that was referred to me from a bank this week that was like Miriam Health. So she had a bunch of questions about starting her business. So of course, I introduced her to one of you guys and then she said, okay, Miriam, I need a CPA. I need an attorney. I need, <laughs> so, you know, here I am making a ton of referrals, but I said, you know, start with SVDC. Um, they will work with you. Um, and when you're ready for us, they'll send you back to, to me, you know? Um, and I said, and talk to them about your options, because the one thing that I know about all of us here is that we are here for the clients. So um, if, if, you know, a client comes to me and they're not a good fit for me and they, you know, um, there's a better plan with Rosalinda at Axion that matches what they're looking for, then I'll send them to Rosalinda, you know? So um, we're here to partner and help small business owners. So please be honest when you come to any of us. Um, Danny, as you were mentioning, like we are gonna find out if you have an, a UCC filing or a judgment or whatever it is that you have, we're gonna find out. So be honest, it talks a lot about your character and who you are. Um, you know, our bank CDC fits a lot of people, you know, we, we don't require collateral. We, we have long terms up to 10 years, but you know, if that doesn't fit what everybody's looking for. So um, be honest with us. And if it doesn't fit, we all you know partner with each other, then we'll send you somewhere else where you are a good fit. So that's my biggest piece of advice, I would say. Awesome. What about you, Rosalinda? I know you've already yeah, had a lot of tips, but, but in particular about the credit, so. Well, we will definitely, regarding the UCC, we will take a second position in a UCC as long as the first position is SBA or a traditional banking institution. We do not take second position to uh, harmony loans, for example, or uh, that situation. So in terms of credit, uh, so we don't have a minimum credit score for a regular program. But we are not going to do a loan if we feel it's going to be a disservice to you as a business owner. So if we are going to put you in a worse position, 
than you are now, we are not doing uh, a good service to you. We're not fulfilling our mission. So, because our mission is not only to provide economic opportunity to business owners, but to make them bankable in the future. So the bank will, you can go to a bank in two years and be able to get a, a loan from a bank. So if we are going to do a disservice to you, I'm gonna tell you, you know, the, the, a loan is not the best product for you right now. And I'm gonna tell you what you need to do in order to get there, right? And it could be credit counseling, it could be uh, going to the SBDC, or it could be reaching out to family members. Now, talking about that, um, so I, I had a client coming to me and say, for example, uh, yeah, I would like to borrow money because I owe my brother $75,000. And I owe, you know, for, for my business and I, and I owe this and I say, okay, so we went over all his debt. Everything was at a much reasonable interest than what we can offer him. And I say, our loan, it's not gonna help you, it's going to hurt you. So, so if my loan is gonna hurt you, I'm, I'm not going to uh, do that to you, right? So it's important that you're able to recognize that and, it, and it's no, I know it's very difficult. I know because when we have a business and I own a business for nine years, it's like having a child. You don't want to let it go. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't want people to tell you what to do. Because it's your, it's your child, it's your toddler or whatever. So um, it is very, very difficult for a business owner <clears throat> sometimes to take advice from others. But in this time, you need all the help you can get. So there's free resources in our page. We have a full page full of resources. Reach out to those resources for help. If you're having problems with your landlord, there is a San Diego attorney, uh, the San Diego volunteer attorney program. There are a volunteer lawyers program. Um, so learn about what are your options, but it's not only going to be money. It's not all about money. It's about strategizing to be able to find other solutions for your business. And of course, what have you done on your own? One thing I want to warn people is about borrowing from, from individuals. So I have had clients that have come to me because they borrow from someone in the community that lends money at 10% per month, at 10% per month. Okay, so, so how are you going to be able to recover from, from that? We are not gonna be able to help you. No one will. So. Don't get in deeper trouble borrowing money from people at high interest because that's not gonna help you. Now, if you have a low credit score, the first thing I would do, go to credit counseling. Go to credit counseling. Find, a, you know, there is credit.org, there is Trust Plus, there is a nonprofit organization that can provide that service for free. So it's just having that conversation. You know, they might be able to help, they might not, but it's a matter of trying. You might learn something along the way. And that's the experience of the clients. I had a client call me yesterday. He called me a month ago. He was not eligible. Now he's, he removed all his collections from his, from his credit, thanks to the credit counselor. And he said, Rosalinda, and I learned a lot. So now he's eligible for our program. Fantastic. And what about you, Kelly? What, what's a tip you can give business owners right now? Yeah, I would say specifically in terms of credit, know what goes into your credit score so that you know how to address it and improve it. And then also to work with your SBDC advisor because at, at the IRC, for example, many of us are financial coaches as well. So we know how to make a game plan with business owners to address their credit so that they can access financing at a lower interest rate in the future. Fantastic. And Wes, we'll give you the last word. We'll, uh, you know, what, what's a tip you can give everybody? Yeah, I'll say just uh, be open to new advice. Um, I've had clients try to refer other possible clients to us and a lot of people um, from what we've seen are, you know, very uh, untrusting. Uh, they don't want to ask for handouts or help. And um, 
I just want them to know that, that we are here to assist you, uh, whether you, you need us or not. Uh, don't be afraid, uh, you, know, uh, you know, put your pride aside. And, you know, it's, I mean, like, like what can you lose from, from a, a half hour or a one hour free counseling session, right? So um, hopefully we can uh, tell you something or give you some advice that might uh, open your, your eyes to a, a new perspective or another alternative or another solution. So yeah, just definitely just, uh, just, just uh, contact us and uh, hopefully it's uh, beneficial to you. Fantastic. So I want to thank all of our panelists. We, we hit the, the 10 o'clock hour. Really want to thank you, Kelly, Rosalinda, Miriam, and Wes. Thanks for getting on this morning. We appreciate everybody. And, and thanks also again to our sponsors, CDC Small Business Finance, Main Street Launch, Primary Funding, Home Street Bank, and Marvel Bridge Funding. So we really appreciate everybody. And you all have a fantastic rest of your Friday and an awesome weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.